Hey, I'm Nick, and in this video, I talk with Jason Hamrock, CEO of Missional Marketing, all about how we can help our churches get found better on Google. Now, you might be thinking, of course you can find my church on Google, and you can. But for people who are searching churches near me, there are specific things that we should do in order to make sure our church is at the top of the list. And he talks about what those three things are that Google's looking for. He also talks about the three things that we should update as part of our Google local pack, which is something he's going to address in this video. Now, we talk all about how people that are looking for a church can find us on Google. But for another video that we're going to record, make sure you hit subscribe. And if this video is helpful to you, hit that like button. But there'll be another video where we'll talk about how to help people find us on Google, even when they're not looking for a church. But let's jump into this conversation with Jason Hamrock about how we can get in the Google local pack. What is it? Why it matters? And why we should keep it updated. Well, hey, Nick Blevins here, and I'm here with Jason Hamrock of Missional Marketing. Welcome, Jason. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. You bet. I want to talk about what you all do, which I think every church needs help with, and that's getting found on Google. And this has been important for years. I mean, churches that have done this well have seen the benefits of that for years. But there are a lot of churches maybe who still aren't maximizing their presence on Google. There's gaps and all of that. So I'll, I'm, I'm excited because you're going to take us through some of that. So tell us a little bit about yourself, missional marketing, and then we'll dive in and talk about how to leverage the power of Google. Oh, yeah, you bet. Nick. So uh, I've been in ministry for over 20 years. And uh, I spent about 11 years on staff at uh, Central Christian Church here in Arizona, where I live in the Phoenix area. It's a big church, multi-campus church. And uh, I kind of cut my teeth as a communication director there and learned a lot about how the church works, of course. But then uh, it was one of those things where I needed to learn how Google works and how do you actually use technology to help grow your church. And so uh, I took all that with me when I came on board with Missional Marketing. And uh, we've, as a company, we've been around for 12 or 13 years. But really the last five or six years, we have decided to go deep into understanding exactly how Google and other platforms work so that we can educate and equip churches uh, so they can use these tools to grow their church. And I kind of say our mission, it really is to help a local church grow and reach more unchurched people using digital tools. And so if we can play that part of just sharing and educating and equipping churches, then we feel like we're helping to, you know, Great Commission kind of work to reach people that are far from God. And, and that's the game we play. So that, it's really where we stay in our lane. And, and um, our team is just, we've been blessed to be able to do this work. Well, it's a great, I mean, it's a great thing you do, because if you think about the average church, we can reach people who see the building, we can reach people who are connected to people who already attend the church, which is a big number, you know, a church of a thousand might be able to reach, I don't know, 10 or 20,000 with just the internal connections and who sees the building if it's somewhere like that. See, not my building, our building, you can see it if you work back where we are, but not just naturally. But then there's way more than that, 10 times, 50 times more people than that, that can be reached online through Google. And so we want to get that right as well. So walk us through kind of some of the misses that most churches and mistakes maybe that we make when it comes to Google, as well as how do we set it up for success? Like what do you do when you work with a church to help them maximize their presence on Google? That's a great question. So I start by kind of explaining a couple things. You just kind of said it. This is one slice of how you grow, right? Using digital tools. Well, when I think about that, I think that your, your church really, uh, everybody you're trying to reach, there's three different rings, and this will be pretty important for the conversation. So ring one are people who go to your church already. They might come once or twice a year, right? They're creasters, or they come every week. Um, with COVID, it's been a unique kind of a situation, but ring one is people go to your church. Ring two are people looking for a church, and that's what we're going to talk about today. That's such a huge ring, and you got to make sure you're accurate in Google when it comes to that. And then there's the third ring, which is a felt need type of searches. People that are hurting, they're struggling. They may have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe they're really far from God. Uh, who knows? But they're struggling with their marriage or parenting or addictions or, you know, divorce or recovering from a divorce, and, you know, grief, all kinds of stuff. Certainly, like, they're searching for how to be forgiven. So I put those into ring three. So today's topic, I'm going to talk about ring two. How can you make sure you're really found in Google? 
Well, when I think of that, uh, th that term search engine optimization gets floated around. Like a lot of companies, they'll say, yeah, we, we help your SEO. What does that mean, right? And, and explain that. So I break it down into two different types of SEO. You have on-page SEO, which we can talk about in just a second. That has everything to do with your website, right? Making sure that, well, from the way that Google crawls your website, you don't have any errors or warnings. You know, like, you know, bad uh, links that are, that are missing. You know, you get those, uh, those redirect links or meta descriptions or keywords or certainly content, all that stuff on your website. That's called on-page SEO. What I'm gonna talk about and share with you is the other kind of SEO. It's called local SEO. And it has everything to do with how Google sees your church as a business, a storefront, because that's what you are to Google. You've, you've got a building, maybe you have five buildings, then you have five businesses and five storefronts. And that's how Google sees every business, right? And so uh, no doubt you've uh, probably heard of Google My Business. Every, everybody seems to know what that is. And if you have any kind of a storefront, Google has already given you, assigned you a Google My Business profile. Now that Google My Business profile, you gotta make sure you actually claim it, right? So if you Google your church name, you're probably gonna see it on the right-hand side of your desktop. And it, you don't see a little thing that says, own this business with a question mark. You gotta make sure you actually click that and have claimed it so that you can log into your, your admin panel. And now you've actually gotten control of your Google My Business. And so um, what we want to talk about, though, is, you know, when somebody does this search on their phone, typically on phones, right, because that's what we use, and they're searching for any kind of a location type of a search, Google is always going to deliver the Google local pack. Um, I'll share my screen and show it to you. How's that sound? Sounds good. Yeah, this is what helped me. And I know about this, right? I knew Google My Business. We manage it from our admin panel. But you helped us even figure out some gaps and some things we could make better as well. And you even bet. if people don't know Google My Business or Google Local Pack, they know searching and seeing results on map, right? That's like everybody right. Everybody knows that. Yeah. You search for pizza joints, car dealers, anything like, you know, new cars near me or whatever. People just search. What happens when people search? Like I love taking my wife to different restaurants in the Phoenix area. And we just like to find hole in the walls, right? We just kind of like to, we're adventurous that way sometimes. And so what happens is whenever I search for a location of a, of a restaurant, let's call it Mexican food or something like that. It's a, I'm a creature habit. I will always search for photos. Does the food look good, right? What kind of atmosphere is it? And then reviews. What do people have to say about this restaurant? Church is no different. And so when Google, when you're searching in Google, uh, church near me, for example, you're going to get this local pack. It's always going to show. Now, sometimes there'll be an ad up here at the top. You've probably seen those. You little ad right there. But you're always going to get this map, right? Google Maps and three search results. That's always going to happen. Now, why we think this, well, we know that this is such an important thing for you to understand is that, uh, you know, Google gets 92% of all searches online, which is mind blowing. Out of Every search done, any kind of search engine, Google gets nine out of 10 people to use Google. One other person uses Bing or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo. <laughs> yeah, right. that's crazy. That's just, and to think about that, in 2012, Google owns 65% of the market share. Wow. So just in eight years, they've gone from 65 to 92%. Where yeah. do you think Google's going? Right, yeah. so whenever I talk, I always say Google because we have to learn how to play their game. And if you don't, you're just gonna be left in the dust. So 92%, right? Well, out of all local searches done on Google, about 70% of people either click on an ad, click on the map, or click on one of these top three search results. Only about three out of 10 will scroll down here to the organic searches. So, and that, that varies a little bit, but it is incredibly important that you're inside this local pack. Right. And if, if, if I were to click on this, which I did, I clicked on this and opened up another tab here, Camelback Bible Church, because I'm in the Phoenix area. I get Camelback Bibles, Google My Business profile, or what's commonly known as a knowledge panel, you know, produced by Google. 
So I see reviews. That's very important. Uh, I see photos. Um, I can probably scroll down here and see other reviews that's, that are speaking into this. They've got a lot, there's some profiles. This is other things that uh, Google's gonna populate. Sometimes you'll see events listed. And people, Churchill's asking me, how did that happen? We didn't put any events on there. Right, you probably put something on like Eventbrite and it's listed on Eventbrite, it's your business. Well, guess what? Google pulled that in because they can and they do. It's kind of like a knowledge panel about your business, which is, you know, people didn't realize that. And so- yeah, they pull, it's kind of like when you do other searches nowadays, sometimes you're used to seeing Google, uh, but before you see the results, it'll give you little answers to your question and it's just pulling it from some other website without you even having to visit the website. So they do that. Even our site, if you Google our site, it knows we have this page and that page and that page. And before we even click on anything, it tells you there's the about us page. Here's this page. Right. right. Those are like little extensions. And then if you have, if you ever Googled something like, you know, how to make cho chocolate chip cookies. Sometimes you'll see little, how to make chocolate chip cookies. You can click on the air down arrow. Those are just Google snippets. And yep. those are pretty yeah. popular because a lot of people click on that stuff. But yeah. Just like this. I mean, you're saying seven out of 10 are going to click on this. So it's important to get in this local pack. That's right. Now, when I talk about Google, my business, I, it's kind of important to understand this, but back when I was the communication director, you know, and websites were becoming a thing, I mean, that really became the front porch before websites, before the internet, really the front door to your church was truly the front door to your church. You know, unless, you know, you kind of take your neighbor's word for it. If they invited you to church to say, you should come to church with me. You know, you just would because, well, you like your neighbor and they'll show up. And then the first experience you'd ever have was driving into the parking lot and parking and walking on campus. Well, when websites came around, that kind of got, not replaced, but there's a new way that people could learn about your, your church or your business, right? They could go to your website and see what you're like. And that, of course, has developed over the years. But now this has kind of replaced that or not, re not replaced, added to it. Yeah, it's like what steps in an order, right? Like now the parking lot was the first step. Now it's like the fourth step or fifth, or I don't know where it is, but this is earlier in the process. That is, because if people Google, like if I Googled Camelback Bible Church, or I learned about Camelback Bible Church because I, I searched churches near me, and then I'm like, oh, Camelback Bible Church. I'm going to look at reviews. If I'm thinking about going to church, again, this is ring two people. They're looking for a church. Or I might click on these photos. So if I click on it, this is what I always tell churches. If you're going to go to print with a brochure that was like your church, I mean, it was like, a, it was a, your, it was your, your, you know, your like marquee piece. You're, you're like, this is the most important thing we're going to print. We're going to hand this out to the community. Are mm -hmm. these the photos that you would choose to show what people, what it's like to come to your church? Would that be a photo you'd be proud of? Of course not. Of course not. You know, I look at that or I, I scroll here and this kind of shows me a little bit. I look at here. See, and I try to tell churches, this is kind of the brochure that you're not going to have to pay for printing, but people review this stuff and they look at it and they make a determination if they really want to try you out or not based on photos. And so I, you've got to take this serious and you've got to understand that this Google My Business uh, profile is really, really important to, to own and manage. Yeah, definitely. And you said there's always, there's three top results right now. When you click into it, you can tell there's more. Yep. Like you can get down, you get more than that. Yep. What does it take in your mind to get into that top three? I know this is something you help churches do, but just generally speaking, what does Google care about to say, yeah, we're going to put you in the top three? Yeah. Google cares about two things and they're really, really good at it. They care about making money <laughs> and they care about their users because their users help them make more money. And Google is amazing when it comes to this. Google, I think in 2018, made like $90 billion just in advertising, mm -hmm. right? So they know what they're doing. And so uh, when someone is searching for a location, Google never wants to send that user to a location that's either closed or in the wrong spot. I mean, they work hard and spend millions and millions of dollars making sure that everything's accurate. Well, so, yeah, I mean, you just made me think of something. How many of us have used maps, went somewhere, and then afterwards it's like, hey, it was this here, or can you tell us more? Google's asking you, can you tell us more about that to help with the accuracy yeah. of this information? That's, that's true. right. That's exactly right. And so how does Google determine if you're, you know, open for business 
in the right spot and actually growing kind of worthy of the Google local pack, they pay attention to three things. Three things are really, really important. The first one, we just kind of covered it. It's this Google My Business profile, right? So they want to see that you've claimed it, that you're active in it, that you're getting Google reviews, right? And so it's not like you want to have 100 reviews tomorrow. You want to have a steady stream of reviews every month. That informs Google, huh, you get people showing up and they like what they see. You're getting like five-star reviews. That's a good thing, right? So that's, a, that's one indication. Another one would be photos. Are you constantly adding photos or you can add videos on here, by the way, too. Are you, are you engaged with your Google My Business profile? That's the first thing. And then the second thing would be then, does this, what's called NAP, name, address, and phone. NAP, name, address, and phone. Does this NAP on this Google My Business profile, does it match what you would find on your website, right? So you need to have the exact same name on your website. If you have a multi-campus church, you should have a, a page for each one of your campuses and it has to be exactly the same. It can't, not, it can't be, you know, um, First Baptist Church, I'm gonna make this Dallas campus, and then First Baptist Church, uh, Grapevine campus, right? It can, it can, if that's on the, on the uh, Google My Business profile, that has to match on the website. Uh, I see so many errors because uh, they, those are usually disconnected. So the first thing is your nap on your Google My Business profile. The second is your nap on your website. Then the third thing that we help, this is what we help with with churches, is Google crawls the internet. And they're looking for other directories that have your exact name, address, and phone. And they want to see matches. And they, that they're very good at this. So I just ran this report. This is Eagle Brook Church. A little shout out to those guys up in Minnesota, Minneapolis area. Multi-campus church, great church. I ran a, a report for them recently. And this was their uh, Anoka campus, right? So in Google My Business, they're called Eagle Brook Church hyphen Anoka campus. Well, then if you start scrolling down here and you're looking at all the different citations, they have some of this right and they have some of this wrong. So uh, if you notice Facebook, in Facebook, they, they call it Eagle Brook Church Anoka. Well, that must be a different campus because in their, in their profile, they're called Eagle Brook Church Anoka Campus. Notice how the word campus is missing right here. That's an error to Google. Mm -hmm. um, or right here under Yelp, Eagle Brook Church Anoka, no campus. That's an error. Or for some reason, it's called a different campus. They've got the wrong citation with Foursquare for this particular uh, mortar stone brick, you know, brick and mortar stone uh, storefront business right they've got multiple 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 campuses some are right and some are wrong now here in yellow pages that's absolutely correct they got it right so that's good citation but they've got these errors of these red ones and if they're not even being listed like there's compass and just dial and white pages brown book they're not even listed in there and so that's not a lot of confidence for google to say hmm you're worthy of being the local pack Right? Because we're not sure if you're even open for business. Uh, your citations aren't saying that you are. You're certainly, they're not listed accurately. And we have only have so many you know, Google reviews and that kind of a thing. So you absolutely want to pay attention to and audit your uh, local SEO to see how are you faring in these other directories. Now, we do this report all the time for churches because it's, you know, it's, it's free charge. Because what we want them to understand is really in the top 35 directories uh, that Google cares about, you really want to be accurate in all of them. Now, truth be told, Google, there's tons of directories. I mean, there's literally thousands of directories, but not all of them are treated equally, right? Google is the largest business directory in the world. I mean, they're huge. So their like, rank of authority is like a 99 out of 100. It might even be 100. I don't know. <laughs> They're really, really big. And there's some yeah, other they ones make it. Really they make it. So it's probably a hundred, don't you think? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> or maybe yeah, because they're engineers, they know, you know, nobody can really be a hundred. Maybe it's 99. That's right. Pretty much. Well, you know, of course, every Facebook is a humongous directory. 
Bing yeah. is huge. You've heard of these, Yelp, Foursquare, BBB, MapQuest, Yahoo Local, Apple Maps. All these are big, big directories, but then there's some directories that are not as big. They're still valuable to have your citation accurate, your name, address, and phone on those, uh, but they're not as, as important. But it is really uh, very, very important to make sure that you are growing in your citations, you're accurate in all the top ones. That just gives Google all kinds of confidence to put you in the Google local path. Yeah, and it could be that you're, like maybe the top 10 directories, including Google and Facebook and Yelp, they make up 99% of Google's decision. And then the other 40 make up the other 1%. But still, if you can get them right on all of them, that's just going to help, right? At the end of the day, if you want to be in the top three and be accurate there on Google. Yep. And, and we're focused on the keyword of church, right? Church is near me. Uh, best church is in my city, whatever you are, wherever you are. There's so many ways that people search for a church with that keyword being the church. And so when, when that happens in nanoseconds, Google is quickly determining who to put in that local path. Google does pay attention to the, the geotargeted area of where the user is. But once you go beyond that layer, they're going to start crawling other directories. And does this local business right here have their citations in order? And if you have your citations in order, better than the competition, which I hate to say that, but you know, there's other competition of other churches, then you're going to go above them in the local pack and you're going to get in, inside there. So it's not always a matter of who has the most reviews wins, although that's a pretty big indicator. Uh, it really matters on these different citations and how many of these are accurate. Yeah. And in church world, it is different because we're not competing. We're all on the same team, but we still just want it to be right, right? We don't control what the other churches are doing and what their Google local pack looks like. Hopefully they'll get it fixed too. I know for my friends that are in my area, I'll be telling them about this and sending, sending them to you guys because I want them to get this right, even though I guess in some ways that could be competition. But even like your map there, uh, you live far enough away from your home church that your home church doesn't show up in the results. So it just makes sense for churches to get this right, to not worry about competition. Just think about your church and get it right for you. Absolutely. You know, and, and uh, I just, yeah, I like kind of what you said. I think you just got to take care of your own business, right? Work on more reviews by asking your congregation to write a review. You know, you can log into your Google admin panel under your Google My Business and there's a little share widget there. You can click on that, and send it out and have your own people write reviews, right? Um, I'm always thinking of three places that you really want to get reviews. Uh, Yelp, pretty important, Facebook, and Google. Most of the time we forget about Google. And so we can't forget about Google, pretty important. And so if you get that done and you start adding photos and then you shore up your citations by fixing your nap issues and adding more citations, you're gonna be crying for more times people will get inside the, you get inside the local pack when someone's looking for you. Yeah, and you've already mentioned this, but I'd love for you to expand a little bit more about like how frequently this should be updated with photos, with reviews. Because when you and I were looking at my church site, we were looking through the reviews and I was like, oh yeah, like 80% of these came when I actually emailed and asked core attenders to write a review. I think it was like years ago, like three, yeah. four, five years ago or something like that. And there've been other ones that trickle in just naturally, but we had not been working on that. We had updated photos in there, but again, we don't, hadn't been keeping that updated. So what's like a rhythm or, or just, you know, how often do you think people should be updating photos, reviews, or anything else that would make sense here? Well, I, kind of the rule of thumb for me is I think you should, you should try and add at least three to five photos a month, right? And you can feel free to take some down and add new ones. It, it really doesn't matter. I would try and include a video or two in that um, so that you just, you're constantly logging in, uh, you know, at least once a month, you're logging in to take care of, of photos. Um, reviews are really, really important uh, because reviews, not only can you ask your congregation for reviews, which I, I would just send, I would have it in the email, like if you do an email newsletter, I would add that at least once a month or twice a month because you're looking for three or four or five a month. You're just wanting that organic kind of just, they're doing it as you keep asking them to, right? So I think that's really important. Plus, uh, you definitely want to be looking at your reviews and make sure you get notified when a review comes in and you respond to that review. With a, it doesn't matter what, if it was a good, bad, or ugly review, you want to respond. And, and obviously, when you're responding, it's like somebody gives you a 
five star review, you're like, oh, thank you so much. And feel free to add a backlink to your website to whatever supports what they said. Uh, and if it's a bad review, you know, apologize. Say, I'm so sorry you had that experience. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about that so we could get better at what, how we do church. You know, just be humble about it, right? The, the reason, obviously, is sometimes, and I have seen this, if you respond, that reader will say, oh, yeah, I guess I was having a bad day. They'll remove the, the bad review, right? If they don't, they don't. If they don't review it or if they don't remove the review and you respond positively, other people see that. And they, they see mm -hmm. your authenticity as you're responding to reviews. And so big, big deal to make sure you're always responding to your reviews um, on all your platforms. Um, yeah. But I'd say push it out once or twice a month if you can, and then add photos at least once a month, that type of mm -hmm. thing. And um, videos, because we didn't have that. That's something you brought to me that we didn't have. Yeah. Now, some people, people always ask me, Jason, how do, like, we have all these photos on here. We didn't put them on there. How that happened? Well, <laughs> somebody took a photo and Google tagged it to your place of businesses because that's where they were. They, proximity wise, that's where they were. Uh, and so it's true, you cannot log in and remove a photo that was attached to your business. But what you can do is you can mark it. You can log in and, and find that photo. And I forget the exact naming of it, so I apologize. But it's something like inappropriate content or copyrighted or something like that. You can flag that. And eventually Google's crawlers, when they do crawl, they'll see that and they'll remove it. You know, and so you might have a photo mm -hmm. from Jenny from you know, 2016 and it's an empty classroom. I don't know why it's, it's there. Well, that's not the kind of photo you want on there. So I would definitely tag those and try to get rid of them. Yeah, that's a good thought. Any other thoughts about, you know, maximizing our presence here at Google? We're gonna do a separate video all talking about that third ring of people that have a felt need they don't know if they're looking for a church yet, but obviously the church and Jesus is the answer. We want to be able to help them too. So that'd be a whole other video, but anything else related to that second ring of people that are looking for a church? Um, well, the only thing I would, I would communicate is that uh, if, you, if you get ahead of the curve now, like you start on this now, it's going to pay huge dividends. So when COVID broke, so we're here in August, right? And we're six or so months into COVID. Well, when, when COVID broke, obviously nobody was looking for a church. So those number of searches just went down, right? It just, they went down. And, and we, there's nothing you can do about it. But they're starting to go back up as, as churches begin to reopen. So doing this work now is going to pay off. And there's a thing that we provide, uh, not that, you know, other, you can get this elsewhere, but we bring in uh, data from your Google My Business profile. Just like Google Analytics, you can get the same kind of data from your Google My Business profile. And there's two type of, types of searches where your business shows up. One is called a direct search. So somebody's typed, like for the example, Eagle, Eagle Brook. They're typing in Eagle Brook. They're probably getting your Google My Business profile and they're clicking on a website because they forgot what time the services were or they needed to learn something real quick. That's called a direct search search they're directly searching for you maybe they directly searched and clicked on on maps right which is totally fine that's ring one right those are people that probably go to your church or they certainly know about you because their friends invited them but it's they know who you are that's fine we're going after the other type of searches and it's called discovery searches people are discovering a church around them and it's kind of cool because we pull all this data into a dashboard and certainly you can do the same thing where you can see how many direct searches you got and how many discovery searches you got, which is so much fun to see that grow. Um, and then you can see what they did. If you'll notice back on, on here, people have all kinds of options here. You can click to go to the website, where you can track that. Uh, people click on direction requests, you can track that. I don't know who in the world would save it, but I guess some people do, Google feels it's enough that mm -hmm. they keep it on there i have no idea and then they recently added this on desktops call it's always been on the on the mobile because that makes sense call and you're calling the church mm -hmm. um, but they just recently added that but this is the kind of stuff that you can track you can certainly track your review count so oh, month over month it'll tell you how you're doing and hopefully you're going up into the right in terms of the amount of reviews and it'll also track your ratings like are you a 4.8 4.9 you drop down to 4.6 you know, stars. And so that kind of data is really important to, 
to know and understand. And so um, we use a, a dashboard to pull all that in, but certainly anybody can pull that in with, or you can go to your Google My Business admin panel and see that data. Yeah, we, uh, we need to do better with it. That's one of the reasons I talked to you, but we get a monthly email because it'll send you a monthly email saying you had, you know, plus 10%, you know, directions asked for or this many visits to the website or whatever. We have been tracking it, throwing it in a sheet, but we have not done a good job, like you're saying, of really looking at it on like a dashboard, measuring it, you know, year over year, month over month, things like that, which would be really important. And I would love for you to talk about all you do to help churches with this, because it could be like our church, we were doing some of this stuff, although you found a lot of gaps in our site that I'm sure exist in most church sites. Um, but it was low management. I mean, we were not really doing a great job with it. It's like I told you, we hadn't done a review in how many years or whatever. But this is something you offer to churches too. So tell us about what you all do if a church would want to say, yeah, let's just outsource that and let missional marketing help us. Sure, yeah. Well, the first thing we do is, let's see how you're, how you're faring. So we run a, an audit uh, of your local SEO and walk you through that, right? Explain what's right, what's wrong. Once a church does hire us, uh, which that fee, it's basically you know, almost $1,500 for the year. Or if a church wants to pay um, monthly, it's like $159. Um, but uh, uh, so you can do either one of those, either monthly or annually. And it's one of those things where once you start it, you, we, we start with year one, go to year two, year three, because we have different plans what we do for each, each year. But uh, what we'll do is we'll, first of all, we'll get in there and examine your Google My Business profile. We want to optimize that. Um, there's quite a few things we do inside of that and make sure it's all looking sharp. And then we get to work on all the errors, uh, first and foremost. We want to fix those as soon as possible. So um, what I was showing you with Eagle Brook was just the errors with the top, you know, 35 citations. Certainly there's a lot more than that. So we want to fix all those. And then we'll start adding new citations in. And usually in the first year, we're adding anywhere from 50 to 100 citations. We've got kind of a method to that. And really, we do all the heavy lifting because we're, we're going in and either manually or we're automatically asking a company to add you the NAP, name, address, and phone. Uh, and we're doing that on your behalf, right? And so it's sometimes those things happen right away. Other, time, other times, they'll take like several months or maybe a director only adds like once or twice a year. And so when they do respond, you've got to be quick to say yes and, and answer any kind of questions they have. And once it's done, it's done. And that's an added review or an added nap. And so when that happens, it's, you know, you, it's fun to see in the first couple of months, the, all these fixes and changes happening. And all of a sudden you start, start seeing more growth and you getting discovered as a business. And that's super exciting. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of churches, this is something they could do but you all know it, you have a system. I mean, you and I talked about it. I was like, yes, I'd love for to have you do that for our church because it's just one of the other many things that we wanna manage with our digital presence. In addition to stuff we'll talk about in the next video about uh, that third ring and reaching people who aren't necessarily looking for a church yet, but they all, everybody needs Jesus and they have some kind of felt need that they're right. meeting. So I love that too. And people can go to missionalmarketing.com, right? Mm -hmm. We'll put links below in the description and all of that. So Jason, thanks so much for the work you all do for taking this time to record this video and the one we're going to do about that third ring. We, we really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for letting me explain it to you. Hopefully uh, you guys learned something a little bit about local SEO. Hmm. <laughs>